It's somewhere between 2000 BC and 500 AD. For one episode, Northern history turns into Northern prehistory. Let's face it, very much has been done and said about the Vikings. Not that I mind, of course, but I do wonder, have they taken over our entire collective imagination of the Scandinavian past? Very little has been said and done about the centuries or millennia before. Who were the ancestors of the Vikings? Who was that ancient people that lived and died here? who hunted, farmed, walked the land, and called this a home. No real written record exists for Scandinavia in this time period. Greek oral tradition names Hyperborea, a place, a land of giants beyond the north wind, where the sun shone 24 hours a day. With no historical sources, You'd think we'd know very little, but we know a lot, as archaeological digs receive increasing interest from the 19th century onwards. Thanks to numerous archaeological finds, we know more about the people who lived and who died here. Now I realize spanning the entire Stone Age in one short YouTube video is next to impossible. So, let me jump straight to the Neolithic. In the Neolithic, a series of hunter cultures have permanently settled Scandinavia and taken to farming and animal husbandry. In archaeology, we get the swathe of cultural names based on the artifacts they left behind. In the case of the funnel beakers, well, they left behind pottery that was funnel beaking. Seriously, um, they did make some pretty good pottery. I mean, look at those beaks. This culture is followed by the corded ware culture, who had indeed very corded ware. That and some pretty hefty battle axes too. Anyways, the farming revolution and the quick pace that society was evolving would take another turn in the Bronze Age. The Bronze Age ushers in a new technology that changes society. For the first time in history, we get shiny swords and OK axes. Powerful chieftains spring up, and with that, increased bullying and warfare. The bronze becomes a metal for the elite, used to signal status and wealth. In return for this metal, which is not native to Scandinavia. The traders exchanged amber, furs, and probably slaves. But how did they trade? How can we find out the way they navigated the ancient world? To do this, you must find and study the imagery that they left behind. Whilst early rock art depict animals and hunters, from the Bronze Age onwards, they depict an overwhelming amount of ships. This ties in very well with the greater importance of naval development all over Europe at that time. Still, we mustn't forget the symbolical value behind these images. They could contain a spiritual message that we simply are missing out on. Spiritual? Are we getting into the whole New Age stuff? All I'm saying is that we mustn't downplay that these people had a culture and a religion of their own. Isn't it possible that these people were just artists, just reinterpreting and recreating the stuff they saw? That's possible too, of course, but I think that these people, just as any other culture of its time, were concerned about the universe, about gods and the afterlife. Ugh. 
So what could these ships be? Could they represent a journey for more bronze and metals? Or could they represent the sun? Or a journey into the afterlife? Or just ships? Speaking of the afterlife, well, in more archaeological terms, an important source of knowledge about their culture is how they buried their dead. Typical of the elite of the day are these burial mounds, often containing but one or a few individuals buried with their weapons or jewelry, or indeed sometimes with their loved ones. These and other burial mounds must have been for someone important. As mentioned previously, a powerful class of chieftains have risen to the top of society and are building these rich monuments for themselves and their kin. Not only that, but the society they build manages to sustain an incredibly sophisticated and artistic metalworking tradition. So, where did this rich culture eventually disappear to? Well, all these economies were involved in the bronze trade, but then something terrible happened. A series of disasters upset and destroyed civilizations in the eastern Mediterranean. Eventually, this would have a knock-on effect up here in the north too. No more copper, no more tin, means no more bronze. Unfortunately, truly explaining the Bronze Age collapse lies outside the scope of this video, and in itself remains a mystery to historians, even today. We enter a period of cultural isolation following the collapse. But somewhere around 500 BC, a new and groundbreaking technology makes its way from the south. Gone are the elaborate burials and customs of the Bronze Age people. In the bogs outside their farms, the Nordics find the metal they need to enter into the Iron Age. Historians call it the democratic metal a metal that depended only on knowledge of how to make it. Learning from the Celts, the Nordic smiths start working all kinds of metal into their own unique designs. This era is also heavily influenced by the rise of the Roman Empire, but warlike Germanic tribes and cold winters kept them out of the northern parts of Europe. Still, around this time, Roman coin makes its way into the hands of the Nordic elite. This newfound wealth changes the power dynamics. Material wealth becomes centered on a powerful class of warlords and chiefs, ruling from their seats in the characteristic longhouses. Important people, warriors, chiefs, kings or queens, are yet again entombed in these large mounds. But this world too would come to an end. Restless Germanic tribes would push south, overrunning Roman fortifications and creating the chaotic migrations period. Eventually, the Goths appear written to have originated on the island of Skansa, which certain historians have interpreted as Scandinavia. Displaced from their homelands by the Hunnic invasions, the Goths migrate and eventually topple the Western Roman Empire. But did they change the Roman civilized society as much as it changed them? Eventually, they come to emulate the people they conquered. And this is where I would like to take the opportunity to widely speculate. 
These conflicts were far from continual warfare. Rather, through migration and settlement, there was a cultural exchange along the way between the civilized and the so-called barbarians. And this might in turn have inspired their own unique set of gods, myths and legends. The Viking culture that follows this period is not a result of isolation. Rather, they build on the ideas, mythology and lore of their forefathers. So by the time they enter the world stage, they already have a very complex worldview. I think here in Scandinavia, our prehistory is so mysterious and so fascinating and actually quite rich. So it deserves a lot more attention and I wish, I suppose, the media would give it that attention. Well, having done my bit, I will leave the Vikings for another episode. And that is the end of the video. Anyways, if you did enjoy the video, please do smash the like button and subscribe to the channel for more updates. If there are any questions or comments you have, please post them in the comment section and I will try and answer you as best I can. Until next time, adios.